Hello, everyone, and welcome to Paperless Pipeline's onboarding webinar. We are so excited to have you all on the call today, so thank you for joining us. My name is Carol Francis, and I'm a part of the customer care team. I'm also your account manager, so I'd like to take this opportunity to invite each of you to reach out to me anytime you have a question or need help with your account. Uh, we also want your feedback, so reach out and let me know how Pipeline is working for you and what we can do to improve. I'll be sharing details on how to contact me at the end of the call, so please, please, please reach out or respond to any of my emails when there's anything I can do for you. Okay, so let's get started. Paperless Pipeline is designed to save you time, and we want to make sure that you're getting all the benefits that Pipeline has to offer. So our goal today will be to help you maximize your pipeline account setup and avoid some common pitfalls. To do that, we're basically going to go over some do's and don'ts. You've already watched lessons one and two, so I won't bore you with step by step, but I will cover some higher level practices that will help you become more efficient. Most of what I'll cover today will be to encourage you to spend some time customizing your account under admin settings to make your account as hands off as possible. And if by chance you haven't watched lessons one and two, I highly encourage you to watch those videos to really understand the basics of Pipeline. So let's dive right in and start with transaction statuses. Transaction statuses are used to track the various stages of a transaction from start to finish. One thing that's really important to understand is that all of the rules in the system related to transaction statuses are driven by the transaction status categories. There are seven transaction status categories, active, listing, pending, other, closed, fell through, and auto expiry. Under each category, you'll have your custom transaction status names. These highlighted names on the left are just examples. Yours can absolutely be different and you can have multiple statuses under each category. When we think about do's and don'ts related to transaction statuses, the first do I want to emphasize is you should use your office's terminology for transaction status names. Take some time to set up custom names so your agents are familiar with the terms and they're more likely to use them correctly. So for example, if your office uses under contract instead of pending, make sure the status name under the pending status category reflects the name you commonly use. Next, you'll want to be sure to only put listing statuses under the listing category. So let's take a look at this a little more closely on the next slide. As you can see here on the left, there is an active listing status that has been assigned to the active category. This example here is actually a fairly common mistake. So why do listings need to be under the listing category? There's actually a few reasons. First, it's required if you want to use the automatic expiration of listings feature. The auto expiration of listings feature is a setting that can be turned on or off under admin settings. But the key to using this feature is that you can only add an expiration date to a transaction when the transaction is in a status that falls under the listing category. So if we're using this example here where the active listing status falls under the active category, then that means you'll never be able to add an automatic expiration date to a transaction when it's in that status. In fact, you'll only be able to add an expiration date when it's in a pre-listing status because that's the only status that falls under the listing category. So that's the first reason. The second reason is your commission summary page will incorrectly show zero or an incorrect value for listings. So here's what that looks like. If you know you've got some active listings and the commission summary page shows zero number of listings and zero dollar commission, or even if the amount is lower than what you think it should be, then your listing status is likely in the wrong category. Now using that same logic on how rules and reports are based on status categories, not custom status names, let's take a look at our first don't. Don't put closed statuses under active categories. Status categories fall under either active or inactive states. There are four active status categories, active, listing, pending, and other. 
The remaining three categories, closed, fell through, and auto expiry, are all considered inactive categories. When a transaction changes to an inactive status category, up to three main things happen. First, the system knows to back up the transaction in the next month's backup. Second, the transaction will get removed from the default transaction page. Users can still search for it, but it won't be shown there automatically. And last, any transaction in the closed category will be counted in the commission summary report and most of the reports in the add-on commission module. A common example where I see problems is when a user adds an inactive custom status like rented to the other category and the system never removes the transaction from the default transaction page and doesn't back up the transaction. If you want the transaction to be treated as an inactive transaction, then you'll need to make sure it's under one of the three inactive status categories. And last, don't commingle transaction status with transaction side or labels. Right now, your transaction status drives the stage of the transaction. While the transaction sides are automatically determined by the system and the transaction labels define the property type. And Pipeline allows you to manage each of these independently. Let's take a look at how the system automatically detects transaction side. As you can see on the transaction page, the system already tracks the transaction side with the letter L or the letter B. This happens automatically based on whether you assign a listing agent or a selling agent, so no need to add extra clutter or create more opportunity for your agents to select the wrong status by trying to insert the side into the transaction status. As we talk about commingling transaction status with the sides or labels, I want to go over a few examples so you'll know what to look for. On this slide, I have an example of commingling transaction status with the transaction side. Since the system is already tracking the side, it's not necessary to insert buyer or seller into the status name as we see here on the left with the under contract and close statuses. Instead, it's best to create one status that purely reflects the stage of the transaction and let the system determine the side. So this slide shows some examples of transaction statuses that are commingled with property type labels like commercial, condo, or duplex. In fact, this is a classic example of what you don't want to do. In this example, we have commercial listing, condo listing, duplex listing, rental listing, etc. As you can see, the list can get pretty cumbersome to manage. And with a list like this, agents have to think a little too hard to select the correct status, which means there's probably too much chance for error. It's best to keep your list short and sweet and only describe the stage of the transaction, as we see here on the right. Moving on to transaction labels. Transaction labels are used to classify your transactions by property type. This is going to come in handy when you need to filter and search for specific transaction types on your transaction page. For example, if you need to see a list of all your commercial properties or all your residential properties, etc., then you'll need to assign transaction labels to do that. Transaction labels are also great for segmenting your reports, especially in the commission module, but also for your full transaction download that's available on your transaction page. Transaction labels will also allow you to auto-assign your checklist based on the property type. And of course, auto-assigning checklists is a huge time saver that will help your admins and agents avoid missing any required tasks. As for things not to do with transaction labels, don't not use your transaction labels. To not use transaction labels is such a missed opportunity for all the reasons we just talked about. And last, don't waste your labels by commingling them with transaction side or transaction status. As I showed you earlier, the system is already segmenting by side and status, so you'll get more value in your reports and your auto assign checklist if you use this purely as a transaction label. Next, I want to talk about standard document names. Standard document names are another customizable area in Pipeline. Your standard doc names will basically consist of the names of all the docs you'll be uploading into Pipeline. Predefining your doc names makes it extremely easy for your users to use consistent naming across all transactions by providing them with a searchable list of document names when they upload or manage docs in Pipeline. 
It also will allow you to take advantage of our doc name matching feature that you saw in lesson three, and I'll show you again on the next slide. But to take advantage of the doc name matching feature, you want to make sure that you set up your standard doc names to match your standard forms, and then extra important, you'll want to create matching task names within your checklist templates. Okay, so let me show you how the doc name matching feature works. Okay, here we are in one of our transaction pages. I have a list of documents that have already been uploaded into the transaction. Notice what happens here on the left when I click on one of my document names. As you can see, the system has scrolled through my checklist and highlighted the matching task, making it really easy for me to mark that task off my list. I'm going to try that one more time with something a little different. Notice what happens when I click on my seller's disclosure notice. The system has scrolled through the list and highlighted review seller's disclosure notice. Keep in mind that as long as the document name is contained within the task name, the system will consider that a match. Next, let's move over to checklist templates. Everything we just covered for your setup with transaction labels and transaction statuses is going to make your checklist more automated. Checklists are one of the most robust features in Pipeline, and any effort you put into the back end to automate your checklist is going to save you tons of time multiplied across every transaction throughout your day. So some do's related to checklist templates. You want to auto assign your checklist whenever possible. You want to create smaller targeted checklists. In other words, don't create huge lists of every possible task because that will overwhelm your users and will also create a lot of extra maintenance for your admins to delete unnecessary tasks. So instead, create different checklists for every property type in every stage of a transaction. Also create separate checklists for unique tasks. So for example, if you need to complete a special set of tasks for certain loan types, then you'll want to keep those as separate checklists that can be manually added to a transaction when needed. And last, you want to set up task rules and app mentions at the template level whenever possible. Again, this will save you so much time when you multiply that across every transaction. Let's go into a checklist template and take a look at that. Okay, so here we are in my listing residential checklist. I'm going to click on the option to automatically apply this checklist to transactions based on the status, based on the label, and based on the side. Keep in mind that if you have not set up your transaction labels, you won't see the option to assign by labels. So you'll want to make sure you have your labels all set up before moving on to set up your checklist templates. A few other areas that I want to remind you to set up are your relative due date rules and your visibility rules. Setting up the visibility is especially important when using your checklist on dual-sided transactions when you don't want the other agent to view or get reminders for tasks that aren't assigned to them. In this case, all of the tasks are intended for my listing agent, so I don't want my selling agent to view the task or to get reminders. So I've set up the visibility to only show these tasks to my listing agent. Last but not least are the app mention rules. Notice that you can app mention someone by their role, or you can app mention a user by their last name or other variations of their name when needed. App mentions are a great way to highlight tasks for a specific user. Tasks will be highlighted for the app mentioned person on the transaction page, the user's daily task reminder email, and on the task page. If we go over to our task page, notice I have a list of over 100 tasks. Another great feature of at mention tasks is you can filter your task page by your at mention tasks. So now I have a short list of tasks that are just intended for me. You can even bookmark this page for easy access. I wanna go over a few more areas before we wrap up. So next, let's move over to our locations. We're going to go to Manage Locations. 
The most important thing that I want to mention with your locations is that locations are not simply for physical office locations. Locations can be used also to segment your teams within an office. So if you want to segment your transactions, your users, and your permissions by your teams, you can do that by creating a location for each of your teams. This will also be a great way to segment your reports within your office. Okay, and the last thing before we wrap up, I just want to show you how you can reach us if you have any questions or need help in your account. On the top right of every page is the help icon. Click on that. The get help icon is the fastest way to send a message to us. You can type in your topic. On the left, you'll get a list of related articles. If you don't see the answer to your question there, just go ahead and type in a message and send in an email to us and our customer care will be in touch with you. Next up is our learning center. So if you click on our tips, FAQs, and user guides, that'll take you to our learning center where you can search for articles, watch video tutorials. The answers to most of your questions I'm sure will be in there. Uh, so definitely take advantage of that. Next up are our Pipeline Pro webinars. You can access the webinar page by clicking on our help menu and going to the webinar link. That'll take you to our Pipeline Pro webinar page. We will host our webinars on Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. Each week we'll feature a new webinar topic along with some wonderful tips and tricks on how to become an advanced user in Pipeline. Uh, we'll be sending you information on the topics each week, so keep an eye out for those messages. No need to sign up in advance. Just come to this page and click on the Zoom meeting link. After the webinar, we'll follow up with an open Q&A session. So this is a great way to get any of your questions answered while we're screen sharing and we can demo anything inside of Pipeline. So definitely take advantage of this wonderful resource. And also, I just want to remind you that you can email us directly at help at paperlesspipeline.com. That email will go to our customer care department. That's also the best email address to reach me. So if you have any questions specifically for me, want to set up an appointment, want to give me feedback, help at paperlesspipeline.com is the best email address to do that. And last but not least, if you need help setting up your account, then definitely schedule an account setup call with me. That will be a one-on-one -on -one meeting with you and me. We can go over any questions that you have. I can review your account and give you feedback on how to improve your account and how to work more effectively in Paperless Pipeline. I thoroughly enjoy getting to know each of you. I say all the time that Paperless Pipeline has the best customers, and I really mean that. So definitely don't hesitate to reach out. Before we wrap up, I just want to introduce you to my amazing teammates in customer care. We have Monta Fleming, our customer delight director, and Hollis Holcomb, our customer care advocate. And let me just say that we love supporting each of you. So please reach out if you need anything. This concludes our webinar, but we'll be moving on to our Q&A session. If any of you want to hop off the call now, please feel free to do that. But thank you again for joining us. And anyone staying on for questions will get started in just a moment.